Hello and welcome back to Prophecy of Pindor and our Iron Man Challenge. Now, here we have an absolutely wonderful situation. And you know how in the previous episode I was talking about Holy Inquisitor Rasmus and how extremely useful he can be because he is technically a unique spawn. So technically you'd be able to fight him and get a Qualys gem and, you know, take advantage of the fact that he is indeed a unique spawn. And he is neutral to you. That's the main thing that I wanted to try and keep intact. Because if you want to, you can fight him, as I've said, and you can potentially get that Qualys gem. However, what I have found is that keeping him neutral for the majority of the game and then only attacking him if and when it becomes necessary for that wonderful Qualys gem. That's pretty much the way that I'm, I'm playing this playthrough so far. And this has paid off because as you can see, he is in a battle against Igrim, and we are going to be fighting Igrim. And uh, this is really kind of weird because uh, I came across this as I was walking around Feardsvein territory because I wanted to try and find the Peasant Revolt Army. And I know that they were in Salian territory beforehand, but I think they've moved on by now. I don't think they're actually there anymore, and I'm not entirely sure if they're even still in, well, alive status. <laughs> I don't think they're still alive. They might have been taken out because I did see along the way here a Fearsvein vassal that has 650 units in his army and he's just a regular vassal. He's not actually like the liege or uh, the marshal or anything like that. He is just a regular vassal with 650 units. But the thing is, is that I don't think the Peasant Revolt Army had that many units as prisoners. So it's a bit weird. Don't know what's happened to them. But I suppose we will find out in due time. And I do have to be very careful here. As I have shown you in the past, these fallen units do have some pretty strong... Well, everything. They have strong HP, they've got really, really good weapons, and they can basically kill you really fast. As far as I'm aware, they also have thrown weapons too, so you have to keep your shield up most of the time. If you're playing on my settings, which are here, as you can see, I've just lowered the battle size again just a little bit, because, as I said beforehand, there is a, uh, well, a, a sort of quote-unquote sweet spot for my system and the amount of stuttering and you know lag and things like that that I'll potentially get and I'd like to try and reduce that as much as possible anyway we're going to hopefully be victorious here uh he and by he I mean Rasmus has been doing an absolutely fantastic job of destroying Igrim's forces in more ways than one you'd think that he would be maybe not so good against the uh, the forces of undead that Igrim has under his command, but he is in actual fact really good. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Got to be really careful about these things. Kind of crazy, kind of crazy. And look at that! I did 90 damage, 90 damage, and that that thing still stayed alive. I mean, can you imagine that? Really? 90 damage? I don't even have 90 HP, and I've almost got 30 strength. And I've basically only been specking into Iron Flesh, which is just ludicrous. And I still don't have 90 HP. I'm still level 20, by the way. I have not leveled up since that time, because as I said, I was just literally running around trying to find any unique spawn, and mostly the Peasant Revolt Army, because I personally feel like with my army at the moment, we probably would have been able to finish them off and even against an army that has about 600 we would be able to gain a pretty significant amount of renown from it even if we're not going to get the the full amount that we would have gotten for the you know 1000 plus army we, we would still get a decent amount so you know we'd get probably half which would be about mm, 55 to 60 renown which I think would be really, really good. And also they do have some prisoners. They had about 100 prisoners the last time I saw them. So that's why it's a little bit, uh, shall we say, inconceivable to believe that the Fiatsvein vassal that I saw with over 600 was able to defeat the Peasant Revolt Army and indeed then gain their rescued prisoners because they would have had to have defeated so many armies to gain those 500 prisoners and then 
for him to gain an additional 500 into his own. It's kind of unbelievable. Anyway, there you go. We eliminated them. And cross your fingers, cross your fingers, everyone. Okay, yeah, thanks. I don't think... <gasps> what? Okay. There you go. There's a there's another one. There's another one for us. I I I don't know what's going on with Igrim, but he is being uh he's being very generous. That's all I can say. He's being extremely generous with his Qualis gems recently, and I have no idea why. This is where we currently are, by the way. I was chasing him all the way from around here. They were fighting and then they were just continually running this way, and I kind of wanted to uh you know, stop the, uh, stop Igram from escaping. So I had to kind of intercept him, talk to him, and he stops for a couple of seconds or one second or so. And then I had to speak to him again. I had to be very careful that he did not decide to turn on me at that precise moment because he then would have had the opportunity to engage upon us in a very aggressive way indeed. And that would have been bad. That would have been really bad. Anyway, we've got some decent amount of cash right now. I have been attempting to find people, and oh, it's really nice that Rasmus is actually on our side. You know, maybe I should... Uh... Oh, hello. Uh, he's not He's not aggressive towards the Feared's Vein, is he? Hmm, I don't think he's aggressive towards the Feared's Vein. He seems to be only aggressive towards the Dashar and towards the Heretic Armies and things like that. I, I probably have to look up uh, Rasmus and see what he's all about. So I think he's going to be quite interesting to look at. And exactly, I, I think I have looked at him before, uh, just as a, a way to research things. But uh, he's he's pretty interesting. He's a pretty interesting character because he is a unique spawn that is neutral to the player initially. Oh, look, there's the guy. <laughs> there's the guy that I was talking about. He has literally 500 units right now. So it seems like he has lost a pretty significant amount. So I don't know where he was to have that be happening to him because that's kind of unbelievable that he could lose so many in one battle but I would assume he probably entered a battle against Noldor or something along those lines all right what do we have here ah okay another snake called army and Kavera has leveled up so we'll level her up yeah by the way I should really show you her weapon this is what it's called it's the man opener and as I said it is an absolutely insane weapon it is really really good and that's exactly the reason why I'm not actually giving her anything else. I'm not giving her any shield or anything like that because this weapon is just fantastic. And we will try to get her some more throwing throwing weapons as well because she actually does have five in power throw, which is actually kind of amazing. And I'm going to just level up her power strike so that she can continue to do massive damage with her polearm. Amazingly enough, she only has 141 in polearm proficiency, but she seems to attack really fast with that weapon. So I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, we, we've, we don't even need to worry about the Inquisition, which is so fantastic in this area. It's basically like your own personal bodyguard, kind of. And uh, you don't even need to worry about them. So attacking these guys, I would definitely advise against it unless you are going to try... Mm, I don't know, unless you're going to try and take on Rasmus with a bunch of Dashar vassals because it would basically make it the easiest. That would probably be the easiest... Uh, unique spawn that you could get into a battle even though he is not baitable so you won't be able to get him to you know follow you or anything like that because of course he is neutral towards you so he's not going to chase you but the Dashar vassals might actually want to attack him and you know that that might make uh, that might make a bit of sense anyway uh, we're going to buy everyone a drink as I have been doing and we now have neutral with Ishkoman once again, which is actually really good because that means I can speak to the Guildmaster and I can finally get an Enterprise, which is going to give me 535. That's perfectly fine with me. Thank you very much. And I will sell some other things here. Heretic Writings. We've got two books of those now. And we also have two Qualis Gems. How crazy. How crazy. Uh, I actually don't even know what to do with these Qualis Gems because on the one hand, I think it would be a really cool idea to uh, open up the mines, you know, the mines of Alaziz. I, I think I talked about that in a previous episode and uh, what, what kind of requirements the mines actually have 
But the thing with the mines is that, as I've said, we are going to need a large pouch of diamonds. All right, so I did manage to find the Dread Legion fighting a Nordor Lord. Now, here is the main problem with this. I actually really wanted to try and defeat the Dread Legion myself. But personally, I feel like this is going to end up in a death for Maltese, or at the very least, she's going to lose. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and help the Nordor Lord. I could have actually... Mm, no, that's not going to work. If I, if I helped Maltese, then it wouldn't work in this way. But basically what I want to do is I want to try and take advantage of the fact that Maltese has over 1,000 prisoners. And so uh, because it's actually relatively close by to the old ruins, my hideout, I went all the way to my hideout, placed a bunch of units in the garrison there, and now I've rushed back and I have a whole bunch of spaces in my army and hopefully we'll be able to build a really, really strong army from their units. So we're just going to auto-resolve this because I basically have no units. Uh, in my army right now, so there's no real point in me going in there. And we're just going to see what happens, and maybe we'll be able to take maybe a couple of people prisoner, we'll see. But I, uh, we're not going to get a, a Qualys gem for this, by the way. This is not for a Qualys gem, because here's the thing. I found this out the hard way a very long time ago. Nordor Lords, if you have a Nordor Lord and he's helping you with a unique spawn, you're not going to get a Qualys gem for stuff he defeats, as far as I'm aware. So that's unfortunate. But we are going to get a little bit of relation with the Noldor, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we... Yeah, well, the loot is obviously going to be pretty terrible, but that's not the main reason why we did this. This is the main reason why we did this. Oh, yes. So look at every single unit here. Look, there's actually a Phoenix Risen. Wow, never seen one of those before. That's going to be pretty cool. Going to take one of those for sure. Shadow Legion Marinus units. They're not so good, but I'm going to take them anyway. Got a bunch of these guys too. Bunch of Barkley units. Barkley is always a very, very good unit to take. And uh, I mean, look at this. I literally have the pick of the crop, which is just so crazy. Take Shadow Hunters. We'll take Ghazi Stalkers. These guys are also relatively good, but I don't really want to take too many of them because I feel like they are slightly lower tier than other things. So we'll take the Jatu instead. And Noble Riders. Rogue Blackheart Squires become Knights, which is always very good. And might want to take the Noble Warrior. What, what do the Noble Warriors become? They become Herseers. So yeah, why not? Let's just take those. Let's take the Adventurer. Let's take the Highlander. Let's take the Huskar. We could take the Halberdier as well, but I prefer Maiden Cavalry and the Kier Guards, I suppose. And we'll take some, some Rangers too. Empire Noblemen, what do they become? They become uh, Noble Legionnaire Recruits. Maybe a bit too slow for my liking. Uh, Empire Cavalry is decent. Uh, Heavy Infantry is okay. Empire Armored Crossbowmen. Empire Legionnaires. Armored Pikemen. Okay, I was actually hoping for something a little bit better than this, to be honest. I actually thought that maybe we would get some really, really good units. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's the case. It seems like they're kind of uh, not so good. Not so good. So it's a bit of a disappointment, really. But I, I guess it's all right. I mean, you know, I... There's not much I can do about it. So I'm going to just take everyone that I can. There we go. Just just chuck them all into my army. And then we'll just swap them all around. Ah, now here we have a fight on our hands. Yes, now it may look like we have a Feared Vein Vassal up against some Singali Enslavers. But that's actually not the case. We are actually in a battle with our own Dashar Vassals up against a Feared Vein Vassal. And we're going to try and eliminate them. And there are a couple of other people in the area as well. More specifically, there is the fellow with over 450 units or something like that. And he is just entering the uh, sort of combat area at the moment. So we've got to be really careful about that guy because he's just going to be an absolute beast with all of his units coming in. So we'll see how we go. And the Dashar are really, really cool in my opinion. So we're probably going to um, do something about that as well. I think I was trying to mention that in the previous episode, but I was a bit, uh, well, a bit forgetful, which is generally what happens to me quite often. 
I, I'm just like, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. There's many, many shiny things, and I'm going to look at these shiny things and then forget what I'm talking about. That's usually how it goes. Anyway, the point is, is that what I want to say, <laughs> before I forget again, yeah, just mark my words. Anyway, point is, is that what I want to do is I'll probably try and put in a significant amount, not too many, but maybe about 30 or so units if I have a maxed out army. And I'll put those into the hideout garrison. And then what I will try to do is I will try to recruit as many Dashar units as possible and try to level them up as fast as I can. Oh, this guy is actually... Oh, wow, look at this. This guy is really nice. Look at that. He is actually... Whoa, he's good-natured. That is fantastic. That is really, really cool. Okay, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're just going to let this guy go. But anyway, so I'm just going to recruit as many Dashar units as possible and then I'll just level them up into Dashar Ghazi stalkers who are... Oh, they're really good. They're really good. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Otherwise, uh, crude berserker armor. Yeah, certainly not something I'll be taking. Is, does anyone want it? No. Okay, I'll just take all this then. All right, so following on from our previous battle with a Feared's Vein Vassal, this guy is going to be a little bit more difficult. This is actually the guy that outnumbered us significantly beforehand. He had like, you know, as I told you previously in the, you know, previously in the episode, he had about 600. Then we saw him again and he only had about 450. And now he only has 260 because he has been embroiled in a battle with some Singalians as well as the Shah which is actually kind of weird. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why the Dashar are helping the Singalians, but, oh well, never mind. I guess I don't really care because we're going to be taking advantage of the situation, trying to get as much value out of the engagement as possible, and that means trying to get some kills, trying to get some kills, trying to stay alive, trying to get as much renown as possible as well. I think we're going to get about 20 renown for this battle, so pretty happy with that, considering... It's not going to be too difficult, I don't think. At least I hope not. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Now, the one thing that I want to try and do, I think my, my main plan going forward is going to be replacing most of my army. I'm not saying all of it. I'm saying about maybe 60%, 70% of my army with Dashar units. And that means, well putting every one that I can, every single one that is not like an adventurer or something really, really powerful into the hideout garrison and then recruiting as many volunteers as possible and then those volunteers will no doubt level up as a result of my trainer skill and we'll probably, I, I'm, I'm probably going to do this, I'll go and just fight some Vanskari raiders or something along those lines off screen and then those guys We'll level up into Dashar Ghazi Stalkers in no time, or at least in, you know, a slightly quicker time, because of course then we have trainer skill working for us, as well as experience from battles, and that's going to be really useful for us. And then, well, then it's going to be pretty easy for us to basically win any battle, with the exception of, well, of course, the obvious, like Noldor and Jatu and things like that. Because those guys are still going to be difficult, you know. They're still going to be uh, forces to be reckoned with. But I think J Jatu might actually be kind of easy as well. It really depends. If we're on a similar, um, shall we say, similar uh, unit count, uh, similar army sizes, then I think that we'd still probably have a pretty decent time. The one thing that I'm a bit worried about in terms of using Dashar units is siege warfare. I don't know how easy that's going to be as we level up to 21, which is really nice. About time. <laughs> it's about time that we level up to 21. And yeah, so I don't know how Siege Warfare is going to be. Maybe someone that has played with the Dashar in the comments can actually let me know whether Dashar Ghazi Stalkers are okay in uh, Siege Warfare because I am having a bit of the stigma from the Kurgits. And if you know anything about Native, you know anything about the Kurgits, then you'll know that they're not exactly great at siege warfare. They may be okay, you know, attacking slightly weakened garrisons or something like that, but try and take a Rodok thief where they have, you know, over a hundred sharpshooters or something like that, you know, against them. It's going to be very, very painful. But yeah, 
Maybe that's not the case with the Dashar. Maybe they're going to be pretty good. Anyway, there's 16 Renown, 14 Morale, not too bad. And we are going to get uh, not anyone taken prisoner. Wow, seems like no one uses blunt weapons in this in this faction at all. Anyway, we're going to get some Singalian reputation, which is not exactly what I want, but I don't really care too, too much, to be honest, because we're actually getting a gold bar, which is actually kind of cool. And we also have some throwing spears, which we could give to one of our throwing weapon proficiency persons or people. Yes, exactly. Otherwise, let's go and do that straight away. So basically, we've got Kavera and we also have Alyssa. Probably going to give Alyssa this because she is used to using spears, but she already has like a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe we want to take her spear away from her. Yeah, let's take her spear away from her and then I'll just give her this and I'll just do that and this like so. There we go. That's what she's going to be doing. All right. That seems a little bit better for her and we'll try and level up a couple of people. As you can see, I've already picked up a couple of Dashar recruits just before I headed in here. All right, so we only, we only have 414 dinars left over, which is kind of crazy. And we have eliminated all of the Feardsvein in this area. Now, the reason why I came over here is because of this. This particular fief is currently under siege. And I, I saw that and I was like, oh, there must be something going on. You know, there must be something going on there. So I headed over as quickly as I could. And otherwise, let's try and be very careful here because I am probably not in a position to actually win against Singalians. I'm not going to be that good against Singalians at the moment because we do have a slightly weakened army in comparison to what we used to have, which is a bit weird and kind of annoying, but I guess that's just how it goes. Anyway, I will just sell the various loot here. I've still got the two Qualys gems, as you can see, and I'll sell the spear, sell this, sell this, and that's 2,200. That's pretty good. And is there a traveler in there? No, there's no traveler in there, right? No, so I'm going to have to go somewhere else. Which is problematic. Very, very problematic because I don't know where Phineas is. And I've I've also... Have I mentioned already in this episode? I'm not entirely sure what to do with the Qualys gems. I mean, I guess I could save them. That's the thing. I could save them for a potential entry into the mines. And... You know, I spoke about the mines in a previous episode. I think I mentioned that already. And basically what it means is if I have a large pouch of diamonds, which is what I need for the map, I will get the map. Then I'll have entry into the mines. Then I'll go into the mines. Then I need to bring a Qualys gem, one Qualys gem, as far as I'm aware, to get a, a rune weapon, regular rune weapon. And then I think I need one Qualys gem and one large, another large pouch of diamonds and some wine or something like that to be able to upgrade it. At least that's what I remember. I could be getting it wrong, so don't quote me on it, but in general, that's kind of the gist. So I need three. No, I actually don't need three. I don't need three Qualys gems. I need one for the initial rune weapon and then another one. So I need two Qualys gems and then I just need, uh, yeah, okay. So I need two large pouches of diamonds, which is kind of difficult because I'm going to need to actually capture the unique spawn to be able to ransom them and speak to them and tell them and, and say to them, hey, uh, can you give me a, you know, a large pouch of diamonds instead of a, a Qualys gem? Igrim, of course, does not want to speak to us. So he doesn't really care. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.